Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. The other week I posted a video in which I compared the Hero Quest expansion The Frozen Horror with the Dungeons & Dragons Fantasy Adventure board game expansion Eternal Winter. The two expansions are quite similar in many regards, so I thought it would be fun to put them in a head-to-head -head battle to see which would emerge victorious. If you missed that video, you might want to check it out. Just remember, it's all for fun. Both expansions are great extensions of wonderful games. And if you aren't aware, the D&D board game I'm talking about here came out in 2003 and attempted to emulate HeroQuest for a new generation. It only ever had two expansions, and it never even had a proper retail release in North America, so it isn't a game that has ingrained itself in the hobby in the same way that HeroQuest has. Nevertheless, it remains a fine example of an accessible and enjoyable dungeon crawl suitable for all ages, and the expansions for the game are very much in demand. Fortunately, thanks to the generosity of subscriber Tony Barber, I have a copy of Forbidden Forest, the second expansion for the Dungeons & Dragons board game, so once again I am going to pit Dungeons & Dragons against HeroQuest to see which will emerge victorious. I'm going to do this through a direct comparison between Forbidden Forest and Mage of the Mirror based on seven different categories. Now, it is fair to say that comparing these expansions isn't quite so easy as comparing the Frozen Horror with Eternal Winter. Both of the Icebound Adventures starred a barbarian hero going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a gigantic enemy determined to coat the land in snow. The Mage of the Mirror and Forbidden Forest just don't share that kind of DNA. However, that's not to say there are no parallels. Both expansions feature heroes with magical abilities. They both involve exploring verdant lands populated with foes you would commonly associate with nature. Both feature enemy forces comprising a mix of elite soldiers and wild animals and both feature a rogue sibling who has turned to the dark side and must be stopped at all costs. Sure, you have to tilt your head slightly and squint a bit, but they still feel like they have more than a passing resemblance to me. So what the heck, let's throw down. Category 1, The Plot The plot for the Mage of the Mirror is as simple as it gets. The young elf princess Melandriel has been kidnapped, and her mother Queen Torelia has received a ransom note from her sister, the Archmage Sinestra. The note demands Torelia abdicates and turns over her power to Sinestra. Torelia isn't keen, so she's searching for an elven warrior brave enough to lead a rescue mission. This warrior must first prove themselves in a series of solo quests before finally attempting the rescue of the princess. The story hints that Zargon is behind Sinestra's plan, but it doesn't get any more complicated than that, and the way the plot progresses from mission to mission is straightforward with no dramatic revelations. In brief, trying not to spoil anything, your heroes perform a number of side quests, fetching MacGuffins and freeing allies, before venturing into Sinestra's castle where you will play through a series of linked quests, charting your efforts to explore the castle and locate the kidnapped princess. It is worth pointing out that at the time of making this video, we are excitedly awaiting a brand new hero quest expansion called Rise of the Dreadmoon, which Hasbro have strongly hinted will tie into the plot of the Mage of the Mirror and also the backstory of another elven character, the rogue heir of Elethorn. This new expansion looks like it will take the events of this expansion and spin them into a larger narrative of political upheaval and betrayal. And that's incredibly exciting but it also isn't really relevant to an analysis of the plot of this expansion as a standalone product. So, for the purposes of this video, Mage of the Mirror is just a straightforward story about rescuing a princess. And how does the plot of the Forbidden Forest fare in comparison? Frankly, it's in a different league. Warning, there are minor spoilers ahead here, although I think most people would be able to instantly figure out what's going on anyway. The plot revolves around twin druids Elwick and Orwick. Together with the original heroes from the core game, they ventured into the Forbidden Forest to banish evil and restore the rule of nature. And when their work was done, the druids made their homes beside the forest and Elwick even got married. However, word spread that the druids were wealthy from their youthful endeavours and one day when the druids were away from home, brigands burnt down the druids' home with Elwick's wife and children trapped inside. When Elwick discovered what had happened, he fled into the forest and his brother never saw him again but now there are whispers of a crazed hermit in the forest consorting with snake-like demons and spreading terror through the land. Auric sends for his friends for help, and this is where the adventure begins. They set off together into the forest. Now that already is a great setup, and surprisingly dark for a children's game. Elwick's family being burned alive is incredibly unpleasant, but the expansion continues to weave a much more nuanced narrative. Although the heroes are travelling with Orwick, the first two adventures represent a flashback as the heroes sit around a campfire talking about the first time they cleared the Forest of Evil. 
In those two missions, Orwick isn't present, and instead Elwick is part of the team. It is only once you get to mission 3 that you are once more in the present time, and Orwick becomes a playable character. And really, that's a lovely little twist on this kind of adventure. It helps to contextualise the group and their relationships. You aren't just being told that once they all fought together to rid the forest of evil, you get to play out that adventure for yourself. And then, when you are thrust back into the present day, and it becomes apparent what or who you are fighting, it's more poignant. It has more meaning because you saw that earlier part of the journey that brought the heroes together. And of course, spoilers, Elwick is the big bad for the adventure, and his presence looms over the whole campaign. After the flashback, the heroes in the present day must clear out some monsters, then find a useful MacGuffin, and then finally go to confront Elwick. What I really like is they first battle Elwick, and when they succeed in defeating him, they try to reason with him. When this fails, there is one last confrontation, a duel to the death between the two druids in a wide open environment. It's a really interesting plot, and it has some real heart to it. There is only so much you can do with a light game like this, but layering in those elements of a lost family, a destroyed man turning to evil, the chance for redemption with the help of his brother, and then a final showdown when reason has failed, makes this whole story quite special. Obviously, Forbidden Forest gets the point in this category. Category 2, The Hero. The Mage of the Mirror revolves around the elf hero class, and comes with a brand new miniature that is an alt-gender version of the elf from the core game. When the original Hero Quest came out, the elf in the core game was male, so the elf in the expansion was female. For Avalon Hill's new edition, the elf in the core game was the female one, so the elf in the expansion is male instead. Regardless, this is just a new miniature to represent the tried and true elf class that has already battled through countless campaigns. However, Mage of the Mirror does do a lot to make this old character feel new. Besides the new miniature, you get new artefacts that are exclusively for the elf, and which make them considerably more robust as a fighter. But even better, you get a set of eight elf spells. Originally, the elf had to take a set of three elemental spells, while the wizard took the other nine elemental spells. But now the elf has a completely new set of tricks up their sleeve. They can still only take three spells into the dungeon, but they can select any they want from those available. Not only does this prevent squabbling between the elf and the wizard over who gets the air spells, it also gives the elf completely new skills, new ways to play, a real sense of being a new and expanded character. And of course, being able to change spells between missions means the elf isn't always stuck in the same role and has a chance to change up their tactics when they want to. The spells were one of the most exciting parts of this expansion for me because the elf finally felt like they were getting something that was special for them. In Forbidden Forest, you are technically getting two new heroes, although they are the same class with almost identical stats and skills, and you will only ever use one at a time. And to be fair, they aren't that interesting. They are allowed to move diagonally in outside locations, and they get the special skill Heal, which will restore one hit point for each spell point spent. Unfortunately, Jozan the Cleric already has the Heal ability. To make it worse, Jozan has virtually the same stats as the Druids, but he also gets the Turn Undead ability. So, to me at least, the Druids feel like slightly worse versions of Jozan. The expansion does include new spells, although the way the spell system works in the game, spellcasters can cast any of the spells anyway, they are just more proficient at the spells associated with their class. As a result, I just don't think there's enough to make the Druids stand out as being special compared to Jozan. Of course, that may be by design. You must take a druid in your team for all of the quests in this campaign, which means you have to drop one of your series regulars, and Jozan is the obvious choice for an early bath, especially considering the lack of undead enemies in this campaign. But even so, I would have liked a little more from the druids. Because Mage of the Mirror does so much to refresh the elf class, and doesn't force you to drop one of your other favourite characters from the team, I'm going to have to give this point to Hero Quest. Category 3, The Environment. To be honest, Mage of the Mirror doesn't do a whole lot to make you feel like you're in an elven kingdom. Although, who am I to say what an elven kingdom should look like? Naturally, the missions all play out over the original HeroQuest board, so you are going to be seeing the same room layouts, the same corridors, the same dank dungeons. The original release of the expansion did very little to try to make the environment feel new and unique. It included a single board overlay depicting Sinestra's inner sanctum on one side, and a somewhat out of place quicksand room on the reverse. And that was it. Avalon Hill perhaps felt the expansion was lacking in that regard, so for the new edition, they included a lot of plastic furniture with a distinctly elvish design. But, the furniture is still just the same stuff from the core game. 
bookcases, fireplaces, altars and treasure chests, just a bit fancier. As a result, while Hero Quest always does a great job of making you feel like you are adventuring in a claustrophobic dungeon, there is nothing here to make these claustrophobic dungeons feel different. I would have really enjoyed seeing some overlays that created outside locations. Courtyards, gardens, wooded glades, anything to give more of a sense of this being part of an elven land. Conversely, Forbidden Forest does a lot more to make you feel like you are in a new location. You get two new double-sided map boards featuring outdoor locations, overgrown ruins and babbling streams spanned with rickety wooden bridges. The core game already included some trees to add to outdoor environments to block movement and line of sight, and this expansion adds to that with some bushes that block movement for most characters and enemies. The stream becomes an environmental hazard, as moving into a water space costs two movement points instead of one, and the wide open spaces create a different feel to the more confined dungeons that feature prominently in the core game missions. There are also thematic traps to fall foul of. Overall, Forbidden Forest does much more to make this feel like an adventure happening in a completely different place to your previous adventures, and that means it gets the point in this category. Category 4, The Enemies. As your heroes are invading the fortress of an evil elf, it stands to reason that many of the new enemies in Mage of the Mirror are elves. There are four sword-wielding elves, and four armed with bows. These enemies don't have any special rules as such, but enemies that attack at range aren't common in Hero Quest, so the new archers do pose a new sort of challenge to overcome. The expansion also includes four ogres, which don't have any special rules, but which are very tough to kill. I love the look of the ogres, but I can't help feeling they seem a little out of place here. Then there are three giant wolves. Giant wolves are tough and fast. They are so large they fill two spaces, and they can attack diagonally, meaning they have a kill zone of 10 squares. As a result, they're quite frightening to deal with. Additionally, in one mission the giant wolves are actually werewolves, and if they inflict damage on the hero they can pass on the curse of lycanthropy. That's pretty neat. Forbidden Forest has an excellent selection of thematic enemies. You get three cute little piggies with a special charge attack, two shambling mounds with a special grab attack that is like a better, more refined version of the hug attack the yetis from Hero Quest use. There are two wonderful owl bears who also have the grab attack, and then you get three Yuanti Half-Bloods, one of which you will also use to represent an abomination as an extra boss level villain. The Yuanti look cool as heck, and they have a nasty poison attack that can bypass a hero's armour. Overall, the Mage of the Mirror gets bonus marks for including werewolves, my favourite nightmarish beastie, and I do like the fact elves were included as enemies, it does feel a bit icky beating them up. Forbidden Forest, meanwhile, has awesome owlbears and piggies. It's all good. I'm calling this category a draw. Half a point each. Category 5, The Boss. The final boss in the Mage of the Mirror is Sinestra, who is your run-of-the-mill evil sorceress. Her mind value is such she can shrug off most magical attacks, and she's no slouch in a fight, but her real strength is in knowing a lot of spells. She also has a decent entourage of assistants to protect her. Unfortunately, one of her spells is reanimation, which is pretty much useless to her thanks to what I can only assume is an error in the map layout, and the heroes can find an incredibly powerful weapon that can make the final confrontation with her rather trivial. In Forbidden Forest, the final boss is Elwick. He has an interesting selection of magical items, and he's pretty tough. You also have to beat him twice, including once in an arena-style duel as a seemingly endless stream of monsters arrive to disrupt your efforts. The way the campaign is structured to lead up to this final confrontation gives it more weight, and it's a challenging fight in a more interesting environment. Sorry HeroQuest, Forbidden Forest wins this round. Category 6, The Campaign. The Mage of the Mirror follows the same structure as the Frozen Horror. First you get a three quest solo campaign intended for a lone elf. You can use these missions as a way to play when you can't get your whole gaming group together, or you can use them to buff a brand new elf character with some decent equipment, including a very fancy suit of magic armour. You then get the main quest comprising five regular missions and a huge double part mission. And this is a tough campaign that will challenge the heroes. The missions can be quite long, so this isn't a campaign you're going to breeze through in a weekend. Also, this isn't really a quest intended for new heroes. And of course, should you beat the campaign, everything in the expansion becomes part of Zargon's toolbox for creating homebrew missions. Furthermore, you can continue using the elf spells and equipment as you progress onto your next series of adventures. The Forbidden Forest campaign is shorter by comparison. There are only six missions in total, and often they will play out much more quickly than the missions in HeroQuest. 
One interesting thing about the campaign is how it handles leveling and integrates the power levels of the characters into the narrative. Briefly, the Dungeons & Dragons Fantasy Adventure game system has a basic leveling up system. When you start the core set, the adventures are all level 1, but the final missions in that campaign are level 3. However, there's no need to grind with your heroes to get them to the prerequisite level. The heroes simply adopt the level of the adventure you are going to play and take the appropriate spells and starting gear. In this way, it's possible to play the missions in any order. And because the heroes automatically adopt the level of the mission, the campaign can nerf them when it wants to. So for the first mission, set in the past, the heroes are level 1, and then that leads into a level 2 adventure. Then when the game switches back to present day, the heroes face 4 level 3 adventures. I thought that was fun. Additionally, as with Hero Quest, Dungeons & Dragons does encourage you to make your own quests, so this expansion is a set of tools as well as being an out-of-the-box campaign. Overall, both expansions are fantastic fun and add a lot to a Games Master's selection of evil tricks and traps, but I think Mage of the Mirror just has the edge thanks to solo quests and a slightly longer campaign. Category 7 – New Game Mechanisms while both of these expansions add small rules like special monster abilities, they also have several larger rules that reshape the way the game plays. However, in both cases, the biggest new rules are recycled from previous expansions. Mage of the Mirror has wandering monster traps and lets heroes hire mercenaries, which are important new additions that we have already seen in the Frozen Horror. It has a few new environmental effects, most notably pit traps that span two spaces on the board, and the new rules for elf spells greatly enhance the experience for the elf player, providing new choices and tactics. Meanwhile, Forbidden Forest has a few environmental features like bushes and water, and the roaming monster rules that were previously seen in Eternal Winter. It's a good expansion with interesting new monsters and a cool narrative to play through, but for the most part, it isn't doing anything dramatic to upset the boat. It does have a weird gimmick though, the Elwick miniature comes with accessories that you can use to dress it up. That's fun. But overall, when it comes to big changes in the way the game plays, I think HeroQuest gets this point. And after 7 categories, we can tot up the results and we find that both expansions have 3.5 points. It's a draw. Which means, as the judge, I get to make the final decision on who wins, and I'm giving it to HeroQuest because werewolves. And to all of you watching, please remember, this is all just a bit of fun. While I do like both games, I am biased towards HeroQuest, and if you decided to grade the games on different categories, you might have a different winner. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments, because that's it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you've really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so, and hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye everyone. Bye-bye.